weight training population, the apprehension test is key, but it has to be done supine. Okay? And a lot of us have learned that, that you did an apprehension test, you did it seated um, or standing even, but that's very ineffective. Okay? You need to have control over the patient. Performing it supine is the way to go. It gives you the most information. So if we put this patient into a 90-90 position laying down, okay, and we really crank their arm back, what you're looking for is do they have anterior shoulder pain? That's telling me is they've got anterior instability of some type. Not necessarily dislocation. Okay? You can take a patient back there and they'll get apprehensive. They won't even let you get back there if they've had chronic recurrent dislocations. Okay? Has anybody here had a chronic dislocation <coughs> in their shoulder? Yes, no, one. You don't like that position, do you? No. Okay? That, that's one of the keys, all right, is, is looking for that. Um, patients, the weight training population, they have subtle instability. It's due to rotator cuff weakness. Maybe their anterior capsule is just a little bit looser than it should be. It's a subtlety. So you have to stress them out. You've got to take them to the next level. So what we do is we put them in this position, we crank them back, we see if they have any anterior shoulder pain. If they have posterior shoulder pain, they point to the back side. That is very significant because that goes along the lines of this posterior superior glenoid impingement. Okay? What's happening is the rotator cuff is impinging on the glenoid labrum on the back side, but it's the undersurface, it's the articular side. The side of the rotator cuff that's inside the joint that pinches on the labrum. It'll even pinch on, on the bony glenoid. The humeral head will even contact the bony glenoid. We've seen arthroscopic pictures where the bony glenoid was actually bruised from the humeral head hitting it when the shoulder rotates backwards. Okay? So there's a lot of pathology that can happen back here. Now we confirm that. Okay, here's our apprehension test. This isn't really a great photo because it's not showing the external rotation. Okay, what it's showing is then putting it in 90-90 and then pulling the, the humeral head forward to accentuate the anterior instability. We should be cranking this back a little bit farther. Okay, so we really should be rotating it back as far as we can. 